Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we finished up some things in Albion, and most importantly, we got a potentially... We potentially got Langley's lost lover from the Quiet Sea, the Super Lipsarian. They're on board, we're going to take them there. They have no idea what we're talking about, but it might still be them. Langley will be able to tell us anyway. Um, a bunch of stuff has changed. So, the Vagabond update has just come out. It's the second of the big updates. The first one was the Way Wayfair one, which the biggest change it made was redesigning the entirety of Albion. And this is the second one now. The Wayfair update, uh, well, it does a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Let me show you. Here's some of the key things. It adds more encounters at uh, some some wonders now. So the region's tiers can now be explored. The Apodian, Apodian Gardens. That's the bee thing in the Reach. That can be explored. The Amiable Vagabond is a new officer. That's always at Palmyre and Plenty's and apparently sometimes at London too. There's a new place to explore in the mists of Whirlberry called St. Anthony's Lighthouse. We can explore the Xanthus Moon around Eagle's Empyrean. Uh, there was a... There was a video of some fungal monstrosity somewhere in the Reach. They've added more kind of random encounters that can happen as you're going through old places. Something about a ship launch at London? I guess we'll see that when we go there. Uh, oh, this I copied just because I found it really, really funny. From the patch notes, Tackety Scouts have had their brandy rations rationed and should now be less of a menace to passing traffic. Remember how incredibly volatile the Tacketys would be with their movements? Just so erratic? They all look like they were infected with guests. So, that's a nice one to see. Um, this is another one from the patch notes that I think might make a pretty big difference, actually, to my damage. They changed a lot of the weapon balancing, and out of all of those, the ones that actually affect me directly right now is they increased the damage of the Saint Fire. That's my fast-firing weapon that I use as my kind of main weapon. It does more damage, and it also has a longer range, almost as much range as my missile launcher. So it's been buffed by quite a bit. I guess I'll delete this now. There's no reason to leave that. So yeah, you know, a few things. <laughs> I feel like a shit ton of content has just been dumped on top of me, my god. Like, I was going to leave London, or uh, Albion, this episode. I might still do that, but now I want to go to Whirlberry Juxta Mare and explore the new thing in the mists. Alright, um, let's start heading back to London. And I'm at the Clockwork Sun right now. And I guess I'll bring you back if anything changes. Another thing I didn't write down is there's apparently three new... They call them agents. I think what they mean is enemy types, or just... I guess they're not necessarily enemies. It depends what side you're on. So yeah, let's use their term. Three new agents. There's a new one for the Tacketys, a new one for London, and then something else that I forgot. So we might see new allies and enemies. I'll let you know if I encounter anything. Oh, they also said they made the Clockwork Sun more dangerous to, like, navigate in. So, maybe you actually might bump into something if you try to go into it. Oh, hey, let's test out my new weapon. I mean, my, my buffed weapon. Oh, uh, let's test the range. Man, look at that range! Yeah, the range is a lot better. Oh, that's so satisfying. I love it. Recover glass, 44%. Nah. Let's gain terror. Why not? I love terror. Except secret charred stovepipe nameplate. I've looted those things before, so I'm not going to read the description. Cry Havoc? What are you doing in the Aunt's Galley? I don't think I've ever had the encounter where they go into the Aunt's Galley. 
The galley is smothered in flour. Every wall, every surface, every object is covered with a fine layer of it, including your aunt. Especially your aunt. White moats float lazily through the air, while your aunt struggles to get a hold of the inadvisably big dog who appears to be under the impression that they're playing a game. He's your responsibility, she hisses. Deal with him. Lob balls of dough at the dog. <laughs> Catch the inadvisably big dog with his favorite game. You bounce lumps of raw sourdough off the dog until he takes notice and snags one of the balls from the air. You attach a leash to his collar when he trots over to spit his prize into your waiting palm, all under the irate scrutiny of your aunt. Ah, oh, perfectly good sourdough. What a shame. Might as well get this bully's acre while I'm here. Ooh, investigating mysterious gleaming? Yes. I think that gives me a cask of... Uh, no, otherworldly artifact. Okay, yeah, bring you back when anything new happens. About to dock at London. Wanted to bring you back for this because the amiable vagabond might be here, and I think we might see a launch of some sort of a ship or something. Aha, yes, this is it. St. Dominic's station is thick with crowds. A brass band plays. The cause of the excitement is an unfamiliar locomotive in imperial blue. A delicate, gleaming craft whose elongated nose houses an array of lenses. A top-hatted official from the Ministry of Public Decency is delivering a speech. The first of a fleet of new Monitor-class locomotives. They will be Her Majesty's watchdogs scouring the skies for the enemies of Albion. The crowd cheers. Well, most of them. Let's take a tour of the new engine. I'm curious what they've got going on. If you're willing to wait in line, you might be allowed a few minutes inside. The monitor's hole is curved to deflect incoming rounds, but its plating is much lighter than that of a London dreadnought. The bridge is cramped, crammed with state-of-the-art sensory equipment. You put your eye to the main scope, and it flings your sight through the monitor's precisely aligned lenses and away to a distant stretch of the sky. The stars are bright and close. You step back, bumping into a control panel. Careful, warns a watchful crewman. That's the gun. Just one, you ask? He grins. Oh, she only needs the one. I'm a little bit scared. Curved to deflect incoming rounds. So it sounds like it's sort of a glass cannon. Hey, this... this I, isn't this icon different for exploring London? Weird. Let me just dump off some stuff so I have more room. Okay. Explore London. Have the options changed? No, but we do have the option to hand in our new law at the Throne of Hours. Remember, we finally managed to pass a law at Parliament, and it said we had to get it signed off by Her Renewed Majesty. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> One of her renewed majesty's servants awaits you. Perhaps you will deign to give this one her royal assent, enshrining your hard work into official Albion law. You present the new law in its ceremonial purple cushioned box. Not to the empress, of course. The servants whisper that this is for the best. The last time someone disturbed her, she became displeased. Instead, a page takes the honor of removing the finely written vellum scroll from the box, ceremonially tearing it from top to bottom, lighting it on fire, and ceremonially stamping the burning pieces into ash. A parliamentary envoy awaits you outside, bearing a bonus for having got a new bill at least this far. Great. So is that how it's supposed to go? I'm assuming that's how it always goes, even though I'm sure Her Renewed Majesty particularly hates me because of our meeting. A while ago. 
Ah, yes. Remember, we have the sequencer's crate of pistols to give to the orphanage. The dazzled sequencer at the Clockwork Sun asked you to deliver a package to the needy. Am I really going to actually do this? London produces industrial quantities of orphans and they're stored in orphanages while awaiting export to a work world. That is the saddest sentence ever. I was hoping there'd be an alternative way of like just throwing the package out and telling them it was delivered. But it seems like I have to actually deliver it. Uh... I'm kind of just curious. I... Sure? Upon opening your parcel, the orphans let loose a loud cheer. A forest of hands appears, grabbing at rusted revolvers and ornate flintlock pistols. Now, now, children, urges the governess to the orphans' utter indifference. A second cheer goes up as they discover that the pistols are loaded. <laughs> okay. Have fun, kids. I think I might want to hire on crew. I don't actually have that much. Unless I want to smuggle something when I leave this place. Yeah, I want higher crew just for now. So, seems like the amiable vagabond is obviously not here. It said that the amiable vagabond liked to hear stories. I don't suppose doing something like this will make us meet at a tea shop or something. Nah, it was far-fetched. Almost at Whirlberry Juxta Mare. Figure I'll stop there and then go looking for the lighthouse somewhere in the mists. Mists of Whirlberry. What was this thing again? Ah, oh, people are scared. Join the Song of the Mists or offer Sanctuary aboard your train. Let's offer Sanctuary. I forgot exactly what that does. Oh, we gain crew. I think I have to get in before I can do anything, right? Oh, you can distract the officer with a pangolin to get in. You will only be able to use the shortcut once. I mean, I gotta do that, right? That's just cute. You raise the perfect pangolin in defiance. Would he really make this face wait? The perfect pangolin must have been an accomplice to more than a few crimes. She doesn't look the least bit scandalized at your behavior. She merely steeples her paws and raises a beseeching look at the workers from the Bureau of Entertainments. As expected, they sigh and coo. It isn't long before one steps forward. No need to make the pretty things stand out here. You go inside. They flash you a bright shark smile. But just this once, you hear? Dress in whatever doesn't particularly matter. Get a port report. Oh, I can get the will of the people here. Okay, can pass a new law. Well, try to pass a new law, which will then get ripped up. Ponder that strange, unearthly taste for 67% chance. Hmm. I think the rubbery lumps thing reduces my terror. That would be good to do. Yeah, reduce it by 5%. Stop at a charming tea room. Went down another 5%. Let's go to the beach. Return to Whirlberry Juxta Mare's arcade. Wait, does that mean that's the only... I can't do anything here. I have to go back. Yeah, okay. I can't do anything there. Hmm. Attend an exclusive exhibition of portraits. Bohemia 4. I don't think I can get that. 
No, I'm almost certain that I can't. Not without the princess. Take a donkey ride? I forgot if that... That lowers terror, really? Isn't that the donkey that we've seen, like, barfing up its own intestines? I think we can only do one more thing. I could go to the off-season. Yeah, sure. Deliver the sequencer's care package. Huh. I, I'm surprised that option appears even though I don't have the quest to do it. Let's feed the lanes. What does that do? Oh, right. You gain terror, but then you get other stuff too. Tale of Terror, Sky Story. Well, I don't really need that stuff. Okay. Well, what the heck? Let's go in again. Right? Like, a Ministry Stamp Permanent I have 14, sure. If nothing else, I can get my tear down more, because I'm worried that when I go explore the new place in the mists, there might be a lot of tear increasing stuff. Let's come to the wilds of a rubbery lump cellar. I think each of them do 5%. Tiny lane bedecked with shops. Consider the strangeness of the lanes. Terror goes up. Savage Secret, Gord of Corster Nectar, Salon Stoop Gossip. Yeah, that's pretty good. Eat some more rubbery lumps. Charming tea room. And now we have to leave. I think 25% is fine. I got a deal on souls. I guess I can just buy them all, huh? Yeah. All right, where's that lighthouse? Oh, what is that? That's it, that's the new thing. Holy shit, it's like a sniper. Whoa. That's really cool. That's really cool. Ministry secrets or confiscated contraband. Oh, I don't have room for contraband, so ministry secrets. Oh, what am I doing just skipping through this? I've never fought this before. Hold on. The ministry monitors are delicate, elongated vessels housing a telescope, a telescopic array of lenses and sounding devices. In addition to aiding the revenue men in tracking smugglers, they perform other less public services for Her Majesty. Each monitor's captain has strict protocols to dispose of the contents of their safe in the event of capture. Are you fast enough to get there first? With time to spare. Perhaps the captain was killed in the battle. Perhaps when the time came, they value their own life more highly than the Ministry's secrets. Regardless, the files are intact. So that just gained me the nameplate. The nameplate's a secret? Oh no, there's more. You comb through the papers from the safe. The Ministry hoards many valuable secrets. Aha, uh -huh. what's this? Retrieve reports on suspected criminals. Gain savage secrets. Assemble a dossier of blackmail material. Gain a mysterious benefactor. Compile a chart of illicit activities for an unlicensed chart. Let's definitely gain a mysterious benefactor. The information in the safe, combined with some of your own 
obscureless insights could assemble a compromising case. Two savage secrets and four salon stewed gossip? Totally fine. You couldn't prove most of it, of course, but the advantage of blackmail is that one rarely needs to. Hopefully you won't need to release the information anyway. Its value is in the favor it will allow you to extract from its subject. Well, the lighthouse could be any of these, but it's probably the one that's on a piece of land, right? I saw lights. I think there was a ship over there. Oh, I think this is it. Yeah. St. Anthony's Lighthouse. So this is a horror. The lighthouse looms out of the mists like a pale candle. Its light burns a searing path, breaking through the wispy cerceration of the fog. A single platform clings to the lighthouse, allowing for engines to dock. The upper gantry hangs far above it like a sentinel. A pair of elderly keepers maintain the tower. They permit guests use of their converted fuel house. It's not much of a generosity. Climb to the top of the tower. The mists recede, the stairs are accessible today. Take tea with the keepers. You've not yet introduced yourselves to the keepers. Off the keeper an unidentifiable squirming. Locomotives with the butchery ability can sometimes harvest squirmings from the surrounding sea of mists. Oh, that's how you get squirmings. Yeah, I never could figure out how to get them. Let's take tea with the keepers. The keepers are notorious recluses. Perhaps they'll be more amenable if you bring them some home comforts. The other keeper is on his break. Wellington booted feet draped over the mildewy couch. When he sees your crew carrying in a caddy, he smiles, revealing two rows of stubs where teeth once were. The insalubrious keeper appears frowning and stained, drawn by the rattling of stained crockery. Grudgingly, he sits and permits the other keeper to serve him tea in a chipped cup. They drink in resentful silence. You must visit again. The lugubrious keeper eventually spits out, indicating the door. <laughs> Thanks. The keepers are aware of you now. They will remember your face. Is that a good thing? Can I go back in? Oh, I can't go back there right now? Shit. How long do I have to wait? I love all the different layers to the lighthouse. You can see all the... Like, dimensionality to it. Oh, maybe I wasn't prevented from going in, I just wasn't in the right area. Join a game of chess. The keepers are below today, the door is locked. Mists are too high today, going outside would be inadvisable. Okay. So, we'll have to come back. I guess all these question marks probably have to be squirmings, right? So I can't do anything with that. Let's go visit Perdurance. It's really close. Don't think I have anything in particular to do there, but, you know, port report and all sorts of miscellaneous things. I think this will be the f Oh god. Uh, I think this will be the first time I've been back to Perdurance since the, uh, face incident. I hope we don't encounter them looking like the daughter. That would be awkward. Hello, Perdurance. It's a party below stairs. Take T 
tea with the butlers and maids. Reduced our terror by a lot. An auction of blue painted crockery. Hmm, maybe I'll get that on my way out. Poor report. And my imitation. As always, let's very poorly make an attempt to charm the servants. Oh, okay. Two servants favor. Move onwards. Charm a servant again. Fail. I don't think we lose favor though. Nah, we're fine. Onwards. Charm the servants. Oh, two successes. Move onwards. Um, this is hmm. unlocked when the counselor's daughter is. Return the presumptive heiress to her mother at the most at the serene mausoleum. I think something special is about to happen now because of everything that happened before. The music stops somewhere below. A mechanical rumble can be heard. As the hour looms begin spinning perdurance as one perfect perpetual day all over again. One of the blacked out ballroom windows opens to reveal the passage back to the parlor at dusk, or perhaps dawn. This perhaps is the truth of perdurance. The shriek of spun time and the growl of machinery, a gleaming veneer painted over an edifice of misery. A chaperone is stopped by a pair of men wearing featureless masks. The passage twists. You turn a corner. When you look back, all three are gone. You enter the parlor through the portrait of the Empress and limp away, sore-footed from dancing and stumbling through the dark. Behind you, the members of the Court of Perdurance chatter and take tea and make ready to begin their day anew. For tonight, and every night thereafter, is the Half-Light Mask. Okay, that wasn't different. A servant tugs at your sleeve. Ooh, our terror just went down to zero. And then four saloon, salon stewed gossip. But yeah, it looked like something different was going to happen, but then it did the same thing as always. Huh. Weird. Well, let's buy a bunch of crockery and head back to the lighthouse and see if they're willing to take me back. Just killing some time, waiting for enough time to have passed to go into the lighthouse again. And I hear some exciting things happening over here. Yeah, I guess if you're in front of them and they're at a good range, you're in quite a bit of danger. But if you can get behind them or just to the side of them, like, they're easy to hit because they're such a huge target. Is this Langley Hall? Search for Ministry Secrets. Uh, let's search for Confiscated Contraband, actually. I've got the room. Man, that noise is so loud, though. Sorry. Monitor captains are either very well informed or possess a sixth sense for contraband. Their holds are often full of confiscated illegal goods. They were raked from limpid Eleutherian pools and glow soft and familiar. Enjoyed unwisely, the light of stars visible from old Earth can provoke transports of all-consuming nostalgia. The captain kept them in his cabin for safekeeping. Oh, you can actually get contraband contraband. Or take less dangerous contraband. I'm fine with taking it. Like, I can sell it. Around the hub, you know? A hog's head of starshine. You order your crew to take them back to their locomotive and are very clear about what you'll do to anyone you caught sampling them. Ah, oh, the sound is over. Oh, it's a scorn fluke that they killed. Hmm. I'm finally at a position where I have low enough tear that I could attempt to commune. 33%. Damn! I got a moment of 
inspiration. I think this might be a description that I haven't read before, actually. The spine is thin and passes easily between your metacarpals. Searing pain settles in your jaw. Your injured hand is as a graze. This is the anguish of profound sorrow. There is a scent of sweat, sharp like fear. The sound of a scream cut short. A crew, not yours, destroyed, punctured. They had traveled far, not far enough. A soul, bright and cheery, drawn slowly from a weary tourist. She claimed to have seen it all. She had not. An Empyrean vessel, broken between rocks and the fluke's bitterness. The crew, without time to don sky suits, picked off one by one. None knew of exile, but someone must. Body after body, broken, pierced, soulless. Someone somewhere must have a clue to its location. I feel like there's a lot of incomprehensible snippets of important backstory there. None knew of Axile. Axile. Another scorn fluke. Let's try to commune with it again. Wow, two successes on 33% rolls. Damn, two moments of inspiration from that. Awesome. Ah, finally. I think it takes at least two weeks to be able to come back here. Time passes pretty fast, but when you want time to pass, it's awfully slow. So I can only do one of these things. Well, I can climb to the top of the tower without being introduced to the keepers, but the game of chess is... You know, requires another action to do. So let's do this one. 92% chance of success. The other keeper in the lugubrious... The l lugubrious keeper have an unusual chess set. It's three-sided. The other keeper explains the rules. The ascendance of the pawn, the captivity of the bishops, and the oscillations of the king. There are rules for queening. There are rules for grieving. The other keeper smiles apologetically. They have a lot of time on their hands. Despite the complexity, your strategy triumphs. The lugubrious keeper is too aggressive. The other keeper too cautious. Both of them seem to panic when your bishop threatens to reach the other side and apostatize. You capitalize. The other keeper hands you some trinkets from his store. Two long, glistening spines. Ah, they must have got that from the scorn flukes. Two otherworldly artifacts. I think I hear another sharpshooter attacking a scorn fluke. Somewhere. Oh yeah, right there. Let me help you. Uh oh. Damn it. Shit. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's commune again. Oh my god, I can't believe I got three successes in a row. Hey, my commingling of choirs has finally risen to a different description. Uh, I forgot exactly what it said before, but now it says, commingle your choirs. Why are you aiming away from me? That doesn't seem wise. <laughs> I have room for confiscated contraband. Red honey. Yeah, it's pretty valuable stuff. I mean, it's not really useful to just get random contraband for fulfilling a smuggling prospect. Because it's just, you know, they're too specific and too occasional of a thing to get for them to be useful for something like that. 
but you can always sell them and I mean they sell for around 200 coin each so that's a pretty good profit back at London repaired my ship and stored stuff away all that good stuff and I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode so I hope you've enjoyed so far and when I return I'm gonna head back to the floating parliament to try to pass the new law that I've just gotten the ability to do now that I've heard the will of the people at Willberry Juxtamare and I'm also going to turn in two prospects that I just got for the floating parliament bronzewood and munitions and then after that head back to the reach <laughs>